Hi, I want to show you something uh, interesting. So the, there comes a point in every Hives developer's life when they need to make an installer for their plugin on macOS and they need to install some stuff in the user library and some stuff in the system library. And if you're using white box packages, you may have hit this problem where you're only able to install in one, not both. And then you have to do some jiggery pokery with um, a post install script. And there's some examples on the forum using rsync and sudo and all, all this other stuff to uh, copy files. Anyway, I found a, a really simple way of doing it. So I'm just gonna share that with you. Although it seems like using packages is going to go away with the new Eyes uh, installer solution. But for now, we're still using packages. So let me show you what I've got. Okay, so the secret is to use uh, multiple packages and one package is set to install in the user library and one in the system library. So first of all, let me show you what I mean by system and user library. So if we open two more windows in Finder. Okay, so on this left one, I'm going to go to macOS, library, and then we can go to audio, for example, plugins, and then this is the location where VSD3 would be installed and where the AU plugins would be installed. Now in this one, I'm going to go to the Go menu and I'm going to hold down my Alt key and now we can see the library button appears. So if I let go, it disappears. So if I click on that, now we're in the other library folder. And this one doesn't have uh, the audio folder. Oh, it does have an audio folder, but it's not the same audio folder. There's nothing actually in here. So this one you wouldn't usually use. Uh, but we've got the application support folder. And this is where you would put your app data uh, config files and stuff like that, um, or audio resources, that kind of thing. And I'll show you the file paths for these so we can see that they're different. So if I copy this first one, so that's the path to this one. And if I copy this one, that's the path there. Is there a way to zoom this in? Yes, there is. There we go. So you can see the two completely different paths, even though they both have library in them. Okay, so this solution does use a post install script, but it's uh, really simple and it's not using uh, rsync or anything like that. So um, let me show you it. So um, I've got my project set up to sort of build automatically from a script. So some of the stuff I'm going to show you is just kind of uh, template stuff. You can see these have templates in the name. So the first thing is I make a package that's going to install the, the app data files. So I call this, in this case, it's Sardina. So this would be Sardina data. And we open that in packages. So you can see there it is, Sardina data. Um, there's some template information in here, like the version is this weird thing. Don't worry about that. So you set that up and then in payload, you can set uh, where you want to install your stuff. So application support Sardina. So that would be this folder here it would show up in. And to add folders in here, you just right click and select new folder or add files, depending on what you're doing to build out this uh, uh, file tree. And I don't think there's anything else in there. Okay, so in here, what we need to do is make sure we've got current users home folder checked down here in the domain section of the advanced options. If you don't see advanced options, you need to go to packages and settings, advanced, and then check this box here, show advanced user options. And then you'll, you'll see this section here. And yeah, make sure this one current users home folder is checked. And that way it will put these files into the current users home folder. I don't think there's anything we need to set up in here. I'm just going to quickly check that. No, that should be okay. Right, so that's the first package. So you set that up to install anything you want in the app data folder. Then you set up the second package, and this is the one that the user will see. This is kind of the proper one. And you add your plugins as you usually do. So I've got AAX, AU, and VST3. They're essentially all the same. Um, just set them to go where you want them to go. And 
uh, that, that's kind of standard stuff, so I don't need to go into that too much. And in the project, uh, you don't have to check the option here, so you just leave that as is. Don't check it for this one. Um, in presentation, you can just set things up as normal. Um, if you've only got one block of um, plugins to install, if you're just installing VSD3, then under installation type, you can actually set this to just standard install so the user doesn't get to an option to customize it, but I prefer the customize one. Another good thing to set is in requirements and resources, set the processor type to make sure they have a 64-bit processor. And if you want to limit it to Intel or Apple, you can do that as well. Okay, now this is when the magic happens. So we've got our plugin packages, uh, VSD3, AU, AX, and a standalone if you're doing a standalone. So that's the, the normal setup. But then we have this one, Sardina Data. So this is a new package, and you call it Sardina Data, add your version number, and we can ignore the payload, but we go to script, and then this, this is showing up red for me because I haven't built it, so it, it won't show up red for you. Basically what you've got to do, in fact, I will show you that very quickly. Uh, we take the first package, the one that had the uh, data thing, and we'll just build that. So you've got to make sure you build it first. There we go, it's built. And then it will show up here. Um, if uh, Sorry, it won't show up there. You need to add it. So let's remove that. So you click the plus button, and then you can now add that package you've just built from the, uh, the first packages project. Uh, that one, the data one. So you add that here as an additional resource, and then you add your post install script here. And again, that's just a file that you can uh, add from this choose thing. So let me show you how to set up the post install script or, or what the post install script contains. Okay, so this is the post install script. This is it, that's all you need. So the only important bit that you'll need to change for each project is, that, well, you could use the same name for each project if you wanted to, but you've got to give the package name here that is the same as the uh, additional resource package that we've added. So basically what you're saying is after everything else installs, run this installer, this package. And um, yeah, everything's the same. Leave that as current user home directory and it should work out just fine. Make that file, save it as a .sh file, and then you add that in here. Just click choose and uh, select your file and add it in. Okay, and then when you're done with that, we can save this packages project and we can build it. Okay, that all went well. We can close that. And now it should be in this folder. There it is, so dina.pkg. Um, it had that weird version thing, so I'm actually going to use one I built earlier, which doesn't have that weird version thing. So this one, it's exactly the same. I just changed those version placeholders. So we're going to run this and click continue. So what we're hoping to see is in this folder, we're going to get the VST3 for Sardina appear in here. And in here, we're going to get the app data, uh, which will just be a folder called Sardina2. And inside there, there'll be the audio resources.dat file. So we'll agree to that. And this is where the customize thing comes in. So we can click customize and we can choose things we don't want to install. I've actually set the uh, data to be um, a required component. I'll just quickly show you how to do that actually. So we go back to the template project. This is the one for the main package that has all the others. So under presentation, go to install type, select the data one, and then come down here and make sure that's set to required. And that way the user can't uncheck that one because no matter which plugin they install, they need to have the app data stuff. Okay, so back to our installer, I'm gonna click install, put in my password, And there we go, we can see in the two different folders, in this one we've got the app data, and in this one we've got the VST3. In here we'll have the um, AU, and if we go to the Avid folder, we should have the AAX, and there it is. 
So it seems to be really easy to me. Um, I dug through the forum and I found all these posts with various scripts. I thought that's a bit confusing. So I went to the documentation of uh, white box packages and that's where I got all this information from. It's right there in the documentation. So it's uh, this link here. I'll leave that link under the video so you can find it. And there's actually a couple of ways to do it that he talks about in here, but I went with the better solution as he calls it. Um, and there's all the steps I followed. I just, I just did exactly what he did here, step by step. And I'm using this script. The only thing I did was change that. And yep, it works just fine. I'm really pleased with how simple it was. Um, the only thing I'm not sure about is code signing. Um, so I code signed, let me go to it. So um, just to be sure, in my um, automated build script, I'm code signing both of these. So um, I code sign this one before I uh, build this one. I don't know if that's necessary, but that's what I'm doing. I'm only notarizing this one though, and that should apply to this because it will be wrapped inside it. So hopefully that part works. Uh, that's the only bit I'm not sure about. Okay, I hope that was helpful. And until we replace our installers with the high solution, I think this is a, a fairly easy thing to uh, do and doesn't require too much extra work. All right. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.